So the poems that we read last week are largely what we would call nature poems, Tintinami being the most exemplary, poems that celebrate the natural world, poems that explore ways that human beings can connect to the natural world and be vitalized by the natural world. They're poems of hope, we might say, and ultimately they're poems that imagine what the good life is, what the good life can be. That's a very serious strain in Wordsworth, and, and you'll see that show up over and over again. Uh, you'll see it in Intimations Ode. You'll see it in Resolution Independence. Uh, poems that explore the pain of being divided from one's environment, the natural environment, but also the social environment, and ways that the imagination can overcome the gap between ourselves and the environment from which we've been separated. So we might say that, that Wordsworth's high argument, um, his sort of grand poetic mode, it also shows up in the prelude, is this poetic therapy. The idea that trying to connect with the natural world through the imagination ultimately vivifies us. But there are other strains in Wordsworth, and, and one of them we see in the poems you're reading for this week, the so-called Lucy poems. Strange fits of passion I have known. She dwelt among the untrodden ways. Three years she grew. Um, a slumber did my spirit seal. I've traveled among unknown men. These, these poems, the, the, the first four I mentioned, were published um, in the second edition of Lyrical Ballads in 1800. The last was published later on in 1807. The first four were written in Germany when... Coleridge and Wordsworth and Wordsworth's sister Dorothy all traveled to Germany um, soon after Lyrical Ballads was published uh, and, and there Wordsworth became very homesick and apparently you know, wrote some really wonderful poetry there about the Lake District and the, and the world surrounding the Lake District. So what do we have with the Lucy poems? They're much different from these the, the, the high argument nature poems that I just described. These are Gothic poems. These poems might remind you more of say Edgar Allan Poe uh, than of any other poet. It seems odd that Wordsworth, the nature poet, also has this, this poes gothic strain. Each of these poems laments the death of this wispy, mysterious nature child named Lucy. No one really knows who Lucy is, biographically speaking. Some assume that maybe Lucy's based on Dorothy, who had wild eyes and was very sprite-like, um, but that may not be the case. Some say that Lucy is based on the younger sister of the woman Wordsworth would, would marry, Mary Hutchinson. Mary Hutchinson's sister, Margaret Hutchinson, died very young. So maybe Wordsworth had her in mind. Maybe Wordsworth had Annette Villon, um, his mistress in France in mind. Um, he was separated from her and could not get back to see her um, because of the, the, the breakout of the Reign of Terror. But, but the bottom line is we don't know. We, don't, we do not know whom Wordsworth had in mind. And ultimately, I don't think that really matters. What matters is that this Lucy um, character is, is, is a marker for some important ideas in Wordsworth's verse. And that's what I want to talk about here. I want to look at these poems from three angles. First and foremost, the poems are elegiac. They lament the death of this young nature child, almost as if she's too good for the world um, in her purity, in her innocence, um, in, her, in her charming wildness. She just cannot live in this corrupt world, and therefore she, ha she had to die. But even though there's a sense that her death was somehow right, the poet still mourns her. Um, especially um, in a poem like She Dwelt Among the Untrodden Ways, A Slumber Did My Spirit Seal. But they're not simply that. Strangely, the poems are also love poems. The poet seems to be in romantic love with this Lucy, but this romantic love manifests itself, strangely enough, through an intense fear of her dying. I'm thinking in particular of Strange Fits of Passion I've Known, when the poet imagines himself riding to her house, beautiful night, he feels replete with love, but, oh my gosh, what if Lucy's dead? 
it's this strange moment where intense love and fear of death are, are go hand in hand. Now, this is an old idea that that the highest form of love is inseparable from some idea of death. The most obvious way to look at this is to say when you are intensely in love with someone, you have a great terror of losing that someone. So a, a sense of the possibility of death is never far behind proclamations of love. But it's, it's, there's a deeper level here, too. If you think of um, the medieval work Tristan and Isolde, if you think of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, if you think of um, the opera of Wagner, Liebstode, Love, Death, you, you see that there's a way in which the, the, the consummation of intense romantic love is death. If I'm madly in love with you and you're madly in love with me, what could be better than to spend all eternity together? Well, we have to be dead in order for that to happen. Or I'm, I'm really in love with you. I'm in love with your youth and your beauty. I'd like that to exist forever. So what could be better than if you were to die? I would be sad, but I would, you would always be young to me. And, and then I could imagine, of course, you being part of eternity. You see this show, show up in Poe all the time. So there's a sense in the poems that even though the poet laments Lucy being dead, there's an odd way in which he wants her to be dead. Uh, because the desire for death is very much tied in with, with the romantic love at its highest pitch. And this ultimately takes me to a, a third way to look at these poems. They're poems about transcendence. This shows up especially in uh, Slumber Did My Spirit Seal. Where even though Lucy is dead to this world, there's a way in which she is very alive in the death world. Uh, she she has no she can't see now she can't hear now but she rolls around with the rocks and stones and trees she's part of this vast nature cycle and and therefore in some ways more alive than she would be if she were simply a, alive on earth uh, we see um, three in the poem three years that she's too good to to be in this world so death becomes a way of her escaping this corrupt world and going into another realm um, that is more suitable for her spirit. So death becomes a marker in the poems for release, liberation, um, and ultimately becomes a way to categorize a character who cannot be categorized in earthly terms. Lucy is simply too strange, too wild, uh, too elf-like, too fairy-like, uh, to, to fit comfortably in the realm of time and space. So death is a place that allows her to go um, where she can live most fully. So those are three ways to think about these, these poems. Uh, they're, they're, they're spooky poems, haunting, but also charming at the same time. There's really, really no poems like them. Uh, you know, Poe has a lot of long elegiac poems lamenting the, the death of beloved women. Uh, but there's nothing quite like these poems, which, which blend in uh, this sense of vitality and beauty in the actual physical world, but also the same desire for, for death um, and a, a non-physical world. So the poems are ambiguous. They're not making arguments. They're, 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 they're mixed and strange. And I would just say, as, as you read them, feel the strangeness. Don't try too hard to make sense out of them, as I've just done. Um, but 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 try to try to just enter into that 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 bizarre world that Wordsworth is painting for us. All right, that's it.